Hey everybody, it's the third lighting tutorial. This time we're in Torquay, where Realm Pictures are based. You can see the pier and the harbour behind me and it's the end of December, so it's absolutely freezing. Um, but fortunately for me, we're not actually outside. We are in fact in front of a green screen. We are in the warm, we are in Realm HQ. And this week's lighting tutorial is all about how you can successfully light your own green screen scenario. Now, most people think that when you're lighting for green screen, all you need to do is throw loads of light at a green piece of fabric and you're done. But in fact, the most important part of making a successful green screen shot is how you light the subject in front of it and how you make that light consistent with the back plate. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the back plate, the lights that are in there and what we need to do in order to mimic that shot. So we're here on location gathering information for our background plate. It's not always possible to be on location, sometimes you'll just get handed a shot, uh, but it is important to know what sort of things you're looking for. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is light. Um, as you know, the subject was sat over here on the bench and uh, the main sources of light that are going to be hitting us are this key light up here. You can see that in here we have what looks like an energy saving uh, fluoro bulb in this diffused globe which is giving us a really nice soft light and the other lights that are in the scene are these lights in the background but as they're quite far away they're giving us a nice hard backlight as well so they're the two main light sources that we're going to have to remember for when we get back to the studio now the best way to analyze those if you're on location is to take your glove off if it's cold and hold your hand out like this you see a lot of gaffers uh, dops lighting people on set waving their fists in the air it's not because they're angry they're just evaluating the light sources that are around them. Now this is because if when you put yourself in the position of the camera and you hold your fist out roughly where your subject's going to be, you get a really great idea as to how the light is going to be affecting your subject. So if I hold my fist out here and I sort of start blocking off the light around me, I can see that I've got a key coming from here which is quite soft and as I block off that light I also see that I've got that hard backlight hitting the tops of my knuckles which would act as the top of the head effectively. So as you start blocking off light from all the other angles, you're seeing what other light is affecting that subject. And once you can remember all those, jot them all down, maybe take a photo of your hand, then you'll get a really good idea as to what lights you need to put in place when you get back to the studio. The other information that you're going to need to remember are your camera settings. Uh, very importantly, what lens you are on. If you are on a zoom lens, uh, try and remember whereabouts on that zoom you are. You'll need to remember your ISO, your shutter, aperture, white balance, uh, and picture profile. All really important information to remember. And uh, a couple of other more uh, practical things that you're going to need to remember is your position of your tripod. We've taken a measurement here and we're about 39 inches uh, off the ground for our tripod. And the other thing you're going to need to do is figure out what angle your tripod head is at. So on here, we're using the iPhone again today and we've got an app called Clinometer. It's basically just a spirit level, but it is important to get these readings. And if I lay it flat, you can see that the left to right tilt is 1.2 to 1 and the forward to backwards tilt is about 89.9, so about 90 degrees. So you've got all that information, you've got your information about your lighting, your camera settings, and now you can take that all back and apply that to your green screen shot for your entire finished product. So now you've analysed your background plate, you've got all the information you need to light your green screen scenario. The first thing you're going to do is set up your camera using exactly the same settings, the same lens, the same height of the tripod and the camera angle, all that information that you got on location and set your camera up there. The next thing you want to decide what to do is where to put your subject in shot and how it's going to interact with the background. So we've just placed a chair in here and our subject's just going to come in, sit down in the chair and it will look like they've come into the shot and sat down on the pier, the bench that's running down the length of the pier. Once you've decided where your subject is and how they're going to interact with the background, the only thing you need to bear in mind in regards to your green screen is that your subject never goes off at the edge of it. As long as that's okay, then you should be dandy. Next we're going to look into lighting the green screen. 
Uh, one of the important things to remember about lighting the green screen is you want to get the most even light possible with as little shadows as possible. So when we're lighting a green screen, we tend to try and put the lights behind the subject so that the subject is never creating any lights on the background. You can see I'm probably making some quite harsh lights at the moment on the background here. The lights that we're going to use to light ours today are our homemade DIY LEDs. These give off a fantastic light and are really ideal for lighting green screens, really soft, bright light. If you don't have these, you can go and get the, uh, the plans on how to make them, just from us. Or you can pop down to your local hardware store and you can knock something like this up for about $100. These are just our fluorescent tube strip lights. Again, they give off a really lovely, soft light. In close proximity to a, a, a room like this, I wouldn't recommend using things like uh, halogens or redheads because they'll probably create real hot spots on the green screen and you'll get nasty patterns from the barn doors and things. So I'd really recommend using things like the strip lights or even better the LED tubes that we've got here. But regardless of what lights you're going to use to light your green screen, the most important thing is to remember to get that green screen as evenly lit as possible. So once you've lit it and you've set up your lights, Take a look by eye and make sure that there's no hot spots or dark areas. Um, when you're happy that you've got it as best you can, take a couple of photos or run some video and pop it into After, After Effects or Photoshop and crush the contrast down and that's going to allow you to see any dark areas or hot spots that uh, you might not be able to see by eye. If you want to be uh, mathematical about it, if you think of the dark areas, uh, black is zero and your white is 100, what you want to try and do is make sure that your green screen is lit about 50 to 60 percent, no more than that 10 percent bracket. So now you've got your green screen lit, you are now ready to go and light your subject and we're going to base that on all the information that we got from our background plate on location at the beginning of the tutorial. So here, We've set up a halogen light and on the front of it we've popped a silk. This is going to give us a little bit of a softer light than the, just the halogen on its own. We've tried to put it at the same height and the same distance away from the subject that uh, it was on location. So hopefully this is going to imitate that perfectly. The other light source is we have a second halogen. This one's on half power because we're lucky to have the opportunity that we can do both with these. And uh, on front of this halogen we've got a CTB which are colour temperature blue gel and it's just going to give us a cool sort of backlight that's going to act as the backlight that's going to hit the head and the shoulders um, and hopefully mimic all those lights that are in the background of the pier shot. The third thing we've got is just down here behind you, just got a reflector as well that's just going to even out some of those harsh shadows and give us a bit of fill on uh, the right side of the face. So there you go, you've lit your green screen, you've lit your subject, your camera's ready to go. You can leave it there and you'd be able to hopefully shoot your green screen shot. But there's one other thing that you need to think about when doing green screen and that is how your subject is going to react with the background. You can't just put them in front of it and hope that it's going to work. So what you want to think about is costume, you want to think about environment, how that's going to impact uh, on your subject. So we were sat on a pier uh, in the middle of December, it was going to be cold and windy. So we just use a desk fan, we just got a desk fan and blew it across, got a bit of movement in the hair. Other things you might want to think about, it might have been raining in your shot recently, you might want to put a few droplets of water on someone's coat or wave things past lights as shadows move in the background. Get creative, really think about it and don't forget those things because that's what's really going to help sell your green screen shot. So that's all that side done. The next thing you guys are going to want to do is figure out how to put it all together. And that's where the wizardry of David M. Reynolds comes through. So I'm going to pass you on to him now. Okay, so we're here in Adobe After Effects. And I'm going to be showing you what is going to be perhaps the world's quickest tutorial on how to key a piece of software really, really, really fast. So this is the shot that we captured with Eve. You can see here looking great in front of the green screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to wax straight in. And rather than going for the obvious choice, which is the plugin called Key Light 1.2, which is the really powerful keying app that comes with After Effects, we're going to go for Color Key, which is a really, really rudimentary keying plugin. But you can see what it's doing here is with very, very little processing power and no, uh, no messing around with spill or anything like that. It's just an immediately very, very nasty key, very, very fast. Now, you'd never, of course, use that. But what it means is that we can then go in and use matte and simple choker. And we can actually expand the alpha channel on that shot. And bang, what we've got there 
is we've just saved ourselves an awful long time rotoscoping because we've created an animated garbage mat. And now all we have to worry about when we're keying is this area immediately around Eve, which is all the only bit that's really worth worrying about. We don't have to worry about now if there's a hot spot up here unless she walks past it, which of course she doesn't in this shot. So now we're going to drop in our background plate. This is uh, backplate.mov, we're just going to pop that in there. It's going to require a little bit of resizing because it's currently 1080 and we're working in 720 to keep things nice and easy. So we're going to drop that in back behind there. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to create a new solid. We're going to make this solid magenta and we're going to pop it underneath our front video. The reason we've gone for magenta is because it's the opposite colour to green and it makes it really, really easy to spot when there is a problem with the key. Now we're going to bring out the big guns. We're going to go keying, key light 1.2 and we're going to select a nice healthy green from the screen. There we go. And that's a one click key. But of course there is no such thing as a one click key. As good as it might look straight out the box, you're always going to notice problems with it. We can start to see around here there's a little bit of dark drift and you can actually see some pink spots on Eve's black top. They absolutely should not be there. That is the magenta solid showing through. Now that's another reason the magenta solid is there. You can't really see those holes in the top with the background because it's not a uniform color and it's not bright and punchy but as soon as you put the magenta solid there you can see these problems if we zoom in you'll get a real good idea of the problems that we're talking about so now we're going to go and combat those problems and rather than trying to do it by eye here we're going to go into combine mat that's going to show us the alpha channel or the mat that has been generated by keylight 1.2 the white areas are going to be kept the black areas are going to be lost but we need to adjust this because what we're actually seeing is some dark spots inside the white area and we're also seeing down here we've got some white spots inside the black area so that's incorrect key what we could do is just open up screen mat here and adjust the contrast of this black and white image by clipping the black uh, clipping the white and clipping the black and that's got rid of all of those problems and so you might look at this and not see a problem instantly but if we pop back into the final result we see that this is actually rubbish this is just taken all that fine detail away from the hair and give us an, a really really hard nasty key so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into combine mat and we're going to bring this back to 0 and 100. So that's our 0 is black and our 100 is white. And we're just going to be really, really gentle so that we preserve as much of this hair detail as possible. So we're going to have a look in here and we're just going to bring in the clip black until it's just about enough. And see, we've come into 18 there. I reckon we can ease that off a little bit down to about 13. And then we're just going to try and kill these little specks of black. So we're going to come in from 100 and straight down to 93 that's knocked out a lot of those problems and we've still got a lot of nice fine detail up in the hair around here now we're going to pop into final result and we're going to take away that magenta solid you can see actually we've got a little bit of green spill still here among the hair so what we're going to do is we're going to use screen shrink grow that shrinks and expands our mat uh, we're going to flick that back to zero and then we're going to take it down to minus 1.5 we're just going to take 1.5 pixels off the edge all the way around our image and then we're going to give it a screen softness of two so we're just going to blur that out ever so slightly and that's going to help it blend in with the back plate we're going to switch off the magenta solid and then we have it already looking pretty nice that hair lights working really really well in order to uh, to just set what we've got there in the scene now it's looking pretty good it's not quite all the way there yet I'm going to choose just personal taste change soft color to hard color and that's going to give us a little bit more realistic treatment of the blacks down here. Um, I'm actually going to rescale Eve here as well. I'm going to change it from 66.7 up to 72 and just do a bit of a reframe so it looks like that she's further over onto that bench. And there you have it. We're just going to then do a very, very quick levels adjustment. Uh, we're going to color correction levels and we're going to see if we can make this black look a little bit more believable. Uh, let's just bring it down to about there. We're going to bring the whites down because she's looking a little bit hot. And then we're going to come in and we're going to go to selective color, color correction, selective color. We're just going to take a little bit of the warmth out of the skin because it's looking a little bit unrealistic. There we go. And maybe a touch of blue in with selective color. And then maybe take some of that magenta away. And we have quite a convincing result straight out of the box there. Make sure that whenever you do your color correction on top of this that you are always doing it after the key. Don't whatever you do color correct your background plate and then try and key something into it. You've got to make sure it looks like it's come straight out of camera and then treat everything as if it is original footage. So we're going to color correct over the top of that. We're just going to do a really really quick level crunch, pop in the blacks, 
bring the whites up ever so slightly, but not too much because we've got lots of nice color in the highlights that we want to keep. And we're just going to crush the, uh, the contrast in there. And there you have it. A key done really, really nice and quick from the original footage, which looked like this, to the final footage, which looks like that. And let's do a RAM preview and let Eve leave you with her final message. Okay, so there you have it. We've gone from analysing our backplate to setting up our green screen all the way through to post-production on a green screen shoot. I hope you found that really useful. It's been the third and final lighting tutorial that we're doing for philipbloom.net. It's been really wonderful. Thank you, Phil, so much for the opportunity that you've given us. I really enjoyed it and uh, I hope we can come back and maybe do some work together in the future maybe. If you have found it useful, then follow the link below and come and bag yourself an hour-long masterclass lighting tutorial with myself and the rest of the team. Uh, there's loads of useful information in there. We go into light theory and we look at how you go about lighting those really dramatic scenes. It's some fantastic information just for you guys. So follow the link below and come and grab yourself one of those. I hope you guys have an amazing new year and I really look forward to seeing you all soon. See you later. <laughs>